Well, we're back here this year getting more catfish from Osage Cat Fisheries. We're going to get a little bit of information from Steve to find out how to manage our pond so that we can get the most use out of it for food consumption. Yeah, like we were talking is that uh, if you have a small body of water, the easiest thing to do is, is stock catfish for food purposes. Uh, they're the best converters, uh, usually about a pound, a pound and a quarter of feed per pound of flesh on the fish. And if you have like a quarter acre, half acre, one acre pond, um, get some fish in the spring, uh, feed them up. Usually recommend stocking anywhere from 100 to 150 per acre, depending on how much you want to feed them or how often you can feed them. And grow them up. Stock them in the spring. Stock some 8 to 10 inch catfish. And if you feed them on a regular basis, you should have stuff that you should be able to put on the plate by fall. Uh, more than likely around a pound a piece and uh, keep track of what you take out and then just supplement that population that you've taken out next spring with another group of smaller fish and keep the rotation going so it's just it's pretty simple okay Steve one thing I wondered about should we put any kind of uh, containers in our pond where they might be able to breed spawn you can uh, the problem with that is a lot of times uh, small bluegill small bass uh, they'll they'll really eat the, the baby fry as they hatch pretty quickly. Um, you can do it, you might see some limited reproduction, but in a lake with a lot of different species in it, like I said, bluegill, hybrid bluegill bass, uh, fish like that, uh, the babies get picked off pretty quickly. Okay, thanks for helping no us problem. out. This catfish is about eight inches long, which is what we stocked in here last year. And right here is a picture of one that old guy caught this year already, this spring that we ate, and I think it's about 18 inches long. Some of the information in this video comes from a publication put out by the Missouri Department of Conservation. And the article here that I'm showing you is specific to a monoculture pond where only catfish live but the information is easily transferable to a polycultural environment where several species of fish coexist. Channel catfish are omnivorous creatures and they like to eat a variety of plants and animal matter which makes them similar to chickens. Chickens like to eat that too Commercial food has been developed that meets the nutritional needs of the catfish. They are, there's both floating and sinking food available. We've only used the floating type since that's what's offered at our local feed store. The appearance of the food resembles small puppy food. It's a little bit paler than most puppy food I've seen. The recommendations state that the amount of food given is based on what the fish will eat within 15 minutes. Water temperature is crucial to feeding fish. And this chart, if you look on the column on the left, shows that if the surface temp temperature is either too chilly or too warm, that you shouldn't feed. And the obvious reason is that the fish in the pond aren't interested in eating when the temperatures are that extreme. And if you leave uneaten food in your pond, it can cause a decrease in the water quality and it could lead to disease troubles. And as Steve from Osage Cat Fisheries that I shared with us, catfish are very good at feed conversion and that means that the rate at which the catfish turns the food that it eats into the flesh on its body is high. Comparing fish, broiler chickens, hogs, and cattle, you can see that fish feed conversion ratio is by far the most efficient. So fish food is made to have 32% protein compared to the common protein requirements for animals on this chart that you can see. However, the protein requirements of fish is it's higher than that of the other animals that I've shown you. A list of the of the catfish food main ingredients includes corn, 
poultry byproducts, wheat, soybean meal. And the products similar to ingredients that you find in dog food. Maybe not, uh, the dog food probably has a little more animal uh, products in it. At our local feed store, we pay $22 for a, ba a 50 pound bag. And at the rate we feed in our pond, that lasts us a couple of months. Now that's, that's a higher cost than most chicken food or you know, hog food. For the fish in our pond, we measure using a bowl, probably that holds about half a gallon. We feed the fish every evening, right around sundown during the summer months. When it starts cooling down, and especially when the ice starts freezing up, we stop feeding them for the, the whole winter. We throw it into the same spot every evening. The wind usually moves it around a little bit, but the fish know where to come and get it, and they are well trained at what to do, and it seems like typically they're waiting there for us to throw it out. Harvesting the catfish can be a challenge, but it's a fun challenge. And if you rely on a hook and bait, many fish are probably going to be left in your pond for the next season. And it's, but it's not like you lose those fish. They just stay in there and they keep growing and get bigger. Uh, some people don't care to eat bigger catfish, but uh, the ones we've caught out of our pond have been good, even if they were bigger. And in some, and in some ponds, though, the owner has set up so that they can use a seining system where they, they have a giant net that goes from one end of the pond to the other and they can catch up a whole bunch of fish and then they can choose which ones they want to keep and which ones they put back in to grow some more. But If you're relying on a hook and a bait method like we do, it actually takes a lot of time. The catfish freeze well in I put them in the freezer and we can have um, a good amount for us to eat several different meals over the winter time and that's a real treat and that's one reason that we have decided to raise catfish for the food for ourselves to feed ourselves um, it's fun to catch them it's fun to feed them but the main reason is that we want to eat them and uh, have food for ourselves that we have supply also, we figure that if the world falls apart and we have to live off of our own land, that this pond is a self-sustaining unit in many, many ways. We can use the water for our own use. We eat the products out of it, the fish primarily. It's a self-sustaining unit for our own personal survival on our homestead. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something about raising catfish and you might want to think about using one of your bodies of water on your property as a catfish home so that you can feed yourself and I'll see you next time.